Today's episode is kindly sponsored by Prosperous Universe, a sci-fi game I suspect a few of you might be very interested in. Stick around at the end for more information. Originally conceptualized only as a military interceptor for the Sith Imperial Navy, but later redesigned by the dark technologist Darth Mechis to serve as a personal pursuit and enforcement vessel for Sith Lords and apprentices, the Fury-class Imperial Interceptor is one of the deadliest small craft in service of the true Sith Empire, and an ever-reliable tool to its force-wielding masters. At a length of 100 meters and a width of 88 meters, the Fury-class is larger than most strike craft, and is designed to host a crew of 15 throughout self-sufficient operations that can sometimes last several months without making port. The frame of the Fury is fork-shaped and shares aesthetic elements with Imperial strike craft like the Supremacy Mark VI Interceptor and B-28 Extinction Class Bomber. The vessel is extremely versatile, offering significant cargo space, as well as advanced communication and pan-galactic hollow conferencing systems, designed to allow a Sith Lord to manage their personal holdings and ambitions from anywhere in the galaxy. The weapons arsenal of the Fury class was designed with personal consultation from Grand Moff Kilrun himself, and offers an unusual degree of firepower for a ship of its size. The four precision laser cannons mounted on the ship's wingtips are cooled through retractable S-foils, and can be tuned to an incredibly high power output, closer to what one would expect from the gun emplacements of a small warship, rather than a strike fighter. As standard, these cannons are supplemented by a powerful multi-lock missile system that can lay waste to formations of attacking fighters in seconds. The ship's modular design also allows for the installation of full-sized proton torpedo tubes to allow the Fury to fill the role of an attack bomber in a limited capacity. In combat, the Fury has the demeanor of a mailed fist, using its large frame to plow clear through formations of small fighters and lay waste to fixed fortifications. The ship falls in an unusual place in the hierarchy of space combat, being small enough to become the subject of turning battles with fighters and interceptors, but often too large and well shielded for individual fighters to realistically threaten. These characteristics turn the Fury into a lethal anti-fighter platform, capable of single-handedly clearing away wings of enemy strike craft with minimal support. The Fury can inflict serious damage on larger warships, especially when properly outfitted, but in such engagements the ship becomes significantly more vulnerable, as larger gun batteries and overwhelming swarms of fighters can defeat the Fury's shield generators and take advantage of its broad targeting profile. Following their introduction, Fury-class interceptors were used in significant numbers across the length of the Great Galactic War, taking part in the Sith reconquest of Korriban and eventually the infamous sacking of Coruscant. The class remained in widespread service throughout the subsequent Galactic Civil War, where its effectiveness as a scout vessel and long-range skirmisher only increased its utility to the Sith Empire. Fury-class vessels were used as personal transports by some of the most renowned figures of the era, including Darth Nox, the heir of Tulak Horde, and the fearsome Emperor's Wrath. Serving through three consecutive galaxy-wide conflicts, and remaining in use throughout the reign of the Sith Empress Asina and the fall of the Eternal Empire of Zakul, the Fury-class Interceptor has remained a symbol of cutting-edge Sith Imperial technology for decades, and in the hands of various Sith Masters, the ship has been used to track down and eliminate hundreds of Jedi Knights and enemies of the Empire across the length and breadth of the civilized galaxy. Big thanks to Prosperous Universe for sponsoring this video. Prosperous Universe is a science fiction economic simulator in the vein of Egosoft's X series or EVE Online. However, quite crucially, it trims away all of that unnecessary 3D space flight and battle simulation and brings it right down to just the spreadsheets. It's all played through a gorgeous UI called the Apex Interface, and it's aimed squarely at that wonderful niche of people who just want to build and tweak every little detail of their giant space empire and corporation, and channel that Ferengi energy for maximum profits. The game has been lauded for its realistic depiction of space colonization, and it provides all of the wonderful control and detail that you'd want in a game like this. So if you, like me, are predisposed towards being a spacefaring baron of industry, and if you've poured hundreds of hours into refining existing exactly how efficient you can get at delivering kahuna meat steaks in X3, then Prosperous Universe should be right up your alley, and I'd encourage you to follow the link in the description to check it out, because not only would you be supporting Space Dock, but you'd be supporting original science fiction, which is something that we need more than anything else right now in the genre. Thank you very much for listening, this is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off.
Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.